Well, speaking of a starting point, let's start with our first presentation. And we're going to welcome two students from the Farm to Fabric to Fashion program at Polymoda. We have um, Leonie Obenauer, who's uh, just studying her your second year in the course, and also Veronica Santa Maria Querbin. Sorry, I cannot pronounce properly Spanish at nine o'clock in the morning, but um, you're both wonderful human beings and we've loved meeting you and we look forward to your year ahead. But there was a special uh, project that you did in your first year that you're gonna share with us in a few minutes, but maybe you can first speak a little bit about your experience and what you've been doing. Yes, of course. Well, hello, good morning and good afternoon for everyone. My name is Veronica, as Philip was saying, and I'm Leonie. I'm going to share my screen so you can maybe see what we have prepared. Are you currently seeing? Perfect. So as Philip and Lee were saying, we are uh, currently doing a master's degree in textiles from farm to fabric to fashion uh, in Florence, in Italy. And we are starting our second year next week. And we're going to tell you about a little what we have done in the last year. So we do believe that there is no fashion without fabric. There is no fabric without material, and there is no farm without nature. This is who we are. We are currently seven students, and we uh, took this picture a year ago, and a lot has happened since then. This is our first workshop, the linen workshop. And as I said, we are seven women that we come from all over the world. We like to call ourselves seven rivers flowing into one voice. And that's the first radical approach of our masters. We come from all over the world and that has allowed us to learn about each other and not only learn about silk in Thailand or wool in Germany or Chambira in Colombia, but has also allowed us to learn about each other because we do not have all of us fashion backgrounds. So we have learned about our backgrounds in journalism, in art, photography, graphic design. And that has been quite an experience. Okay, so how Lee already said, we do not start with a sketch. We started with going to a farm, in this case, to the beautiful farm of Claudia Jongsta in the Netherlands. And there we spent a whole week and we learned how to, yeah, we, how to, to process our food, how to, uh, to process the wool, because um, our philosophy is about a lifestyle, not only about fashion. So we learned about where is the, room, where the wool actually from, but we also learned where is the cotton from, where is mohair from, from South Africa, where is the... Uh, what yeah, else the the yak nettle and um, linen, of course. How do we grow linen? So we start with the farm because, yeah, a lot of people have forgotten that what we are wearing, if it's not synthetic, it's from the nature. And so we have to think about the holistic farming and how to how we gain our uh, resources. We discover along the way that the joy of making makes beautiful things. So as um, Philip and Lee were also saying, we are constantly in the workshop. Uh, so we are when we are not weaving, we are knitting, we are spinning. We had um, taken advantage of a magnificent group of teachers that come from all over the world, from England, um, India, um, South Africa, and we have learned so much from them in the workshop and the importance of preserving these techniques and knowing how to spin. We have become spinners, weavers, knitters, macramers, uh, knotters, everything. And what is super important and fascinating, all these people have a expert knowledge. And if we don't preserve this knowledge, we will forget, especially here in Europe, we have already forgotten, forgotten so much. So it's very important to us to keep crafting to keep learning okay so um yeah we we learn a lot but we also discuss a lot we come from different backgrounds and for us our fashion is also political it is yeah like i said a philosophy and has the power to open conversations we have to 
discuss to also find a way to a better fashion maybe. And that's why we have also learned not only about farming, fashion, of course, uh, textile techniques, but also about anthropology tools, archaeology tools, history tools that have once again done a holistic approach to what we believe in. All right. And um, another thing is we're not only crafting and yeah, we, we think in a multidisciplinary way. So we work with taking pictures, with writing, with, yeah, of course, crafting, but yeah, it is a whole story. And we wanted to show you a little case study. study. Um, Daniel Costa, one of our amazing teachers, he came from Tyrol and he brought with him yak and nettle fibers, which most of us have never heard of. So it's very, wow. And um, yeah, he uh, gave us the task to invent a myth around these fibers, to work with the fibers, to think about yarns, to make a yarn object. And so we started with uh, discussing what is a yarn. A yarn can be a can be a bridge, it can be, we, we sew together our hands with, with yarns. A yarn is maybe even music, because for us, a yarn was, in a metaphorical way, something that connects to points, that connects people. So that was our starting point. And we asked ourselves, why do we have this strong urge to twist? So we invented the myth, and the myth kind of came naturally to us, because it's also, it shows also what we did in this five-day workshop. So we started with the fibers. So in the beginning, we knew nothing about the fibers. Like I said, the, the nettle and the yak, it was completely unknown to us. And it was like being in the dark. And um, yeah, we... We started placing ourselves in this ancient world in which um, the darkness is the beginning of everything. And when we can see, but we can touch what is happening to our senses and what is the fiber awakening in our spirits and in our desire to know more. And what is the fiber already telling us? Okay, so um, here you can see the beautiful raw material because we we believe that there is such beauty in the raw material and we just have to add to it a bit to uh, to help it to show off what it really has inside. So through photography, as Leonie was saying, we were capturing that uh, essence so, with nettle. The companion arrived. So we were again uh, thinking, what was these first human beings in the earth thinking when they started twisting? what was the fiber uh, awakening in them. So we started in a very intuitive way, uh, twisting and just trying these ancient techniques of making cords, wrapping around nettle fiber, wrapping also fabrics, uh, making these very simple um, rope structures that were kind of guiding our steps in a metaphorical way, also guiding and tracing a map of humans' um, relationship with textiles and relationship with its um, natural surroundings. We were, even though this was a workshop that was part of the first chapter, which was fibers, we were still already experimenting with techniques. So we were in a very intuitive way, again, trying to do nets with macrame, but also trying to do crochet experiments and knitted experiments. Um, this, for example, the picture that we can see uh, here uh, is actually an experiment that one of our classmates, AZ, learned how to do sprung, a very ancient textile technique, basically in two days. So we were trying to really um, experiment and try to think out of the box. I think that what this workshop left us at the end was this unconventional approach to think about textiles in a yarn way um was leading to unpredictable results. We were not having the task to make a garden, to make a piece, to make something. It was just try to make a yarn object. What is a yarn object at the end? Mm -hmm. It can be a very open definition of it again. 
And like we we named the chapter, the, the fiber is like a companion and it wants to guide us. And it also already says, okay, maybe you should try knitting, maybe you should try felting me. So um, in this chapter, it uh, the bees arise and the bees in this case is the yak because in our story, the, the people now, they, they have gotten to know the nettle and now there's something strange showing up and it's even wilder, it has a, a crazy power inside. And it's really when you touch this fiber, it's so spiky and resistant and you don't even know, okay, what will I do with it? So yeah, but you can also feel that energy that is in it. And this, for example, is a felting study that also one of our teammates, uh, Ting, has done. And uh, yeah, we were just playing with the fiber and capturing kind of this power and energy and wildness that is inside. This was an amazing workshop because also um, Daniel Costa was probably one of our first male teachers in the workshop. And he came with the drill and came with the hammer and we were not soft textile makers, which we are, of course, we love the farm. We are very sensitive in our own ways, but we were being strong Vikings as this mm. story of the yak and ancestral power of, of, of textile was also awakening in us that crazy spirit. Yeah. And, and because also it was challenging, it was challenging to spin this crazy outer coat hair of the yak. I don't think and it was was a bit insane also but it was fun yeah and then in our story it goes ahead um that uh yeah um people of course always then they go with the wildness a bit and then they want to tame it also we we wanted to do the we wanted to spin it we wanted to knit with it so um we tried our best but in the end you can't force it you have to listen to the fiber and it stayed wild Let's just say it. But yeah, for example, here we we did this is a hand spun uh, study, and then it was knitted. And this, for example, is uh, the yarn object I did, and for me, it represents this this contrast between intuition, but also constructing. I constructed uh, from this really really thin nettle. I did this massive cord, which probably can be used for sailing or something. So um, yeah, it's kind of this balance also between intuitively knowing about the history, but also thinking, okay, what can come next? And the final chapter of our story was when the color arrived. So in our story, um, when humans started finally seeing, they had the urge to color their fibers as well. So it was kind of this urge to to make everything colorful, which was basically my urge. Uh, for me, it was a challenge, this chapter, because this, this uh, workshop, because I'm not used to working with black and white fibers. I am a dyer. I have discovered that color is my mother tongue, as I like to say. So I had the urge to dye the, the yarns. So this is the, ch the color chapter in which I did um, some color experiments with cochineal, with logwood, but also twisting the fiber and um, constructing this color universe that was um, basically the light. Mm -hmm. um, and also adding your own touch to the fiber. So it's kind of like a communication between what you want and what the fiber wants. Exactly. So... As you can say, sometimes we learn about each other more than we learn about ourselves in a way. So this um, was the material experiments that led to, to this question or this affirmation. We were ready to weave our future because um, we were ready to, to understand um, fiber as not only a way of making, but a way of thinking and a way of also being in this world. So we wanted to also thank our amazing teacher, Daniel Costa, who took us in this journey and who guided us. Um, and again, in five days. In five days, yeah. This was the result of a five-day workshop, which is almost as long as most of our workshops were. So we are ready to weave our future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, ladies. You're so amazing and inspiring always. But um, thank you for sharing this um, window into your world from the last 12 months. And uh, I think it's a good start to, to the day to think about the essence of fiber and the soul of the garment. So Before we start anything else, it's really appropriate because now we have the foundation of the day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Paul, you. also.